The United Spay Alliance online conference is happening this weekend, October 13th through 15th. Grab your spot today. Registration is $75. Presented in partnership with United Spay Alliance, this conference will focus on all things spay and neuter. Hear from folks around the country who are helping to increase access to low-cost, high-quality spay neuter services. Speakers currently include Dr. Jeff, the Rocky Mountain vet, spay neuter advocate and founder of Planned Pethood International, Dr. Michelle Gonzalez, spay neuter veterinarian, mentor and founder of the Rascal Unit, a fleet of mobile surgical units serving Ohio. Dr. Bob Wheaton, high quality, high volume spay neuter surgeon and former head of the shelter medicine program at the University of Illinois, and many more. We have quite a lineup of spay neuter advocates and professionals. So, from rescuers to shelter staff and volunteers to veterinary professionals, this conference has a little something for everyone who is working to get more animals spayed and neutered today to prevent suffering tomorrow. Register today at www.communitycatspodcast.com and turn your passion for cats into action. You've tuned in to the Community Cats Podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats Podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. And today I'm thrilled to be interviewing Jackson Galaxy and Steve Kaufman. Jackson is an animal advocate and New York Times bestselling author with 30 years of experience working with cats and their guardians, best known as the host of Animal Planet's long-running hit show, My Cat from Hell. Jackson now provides free weekly content to an audience of nearly 6 million across social media platforms through the Jackson Galaxy Project, a signature program of greater good charities. He seeks to reduce the number of animals in shelters, improve the lives of at-risk animals, and help the people who care for them. We also have Steve Kaufman, who's the Vice President of Operations for the Goods Program at Greater Good Charities. Steve joins Greater Good Charities team, and in his role, he assists in developing and executing strategies that will support the Goods Program product delivery to areas of the most need. Well, I'd like to welcome both of you to the show, and first, I'm going to reach out to Steve and ask him, how did you become passionate about cats, Steve? How did I become passionate about cats? Well, as a short story, I think my first experience with uh, owning a cat as an adult, when I started working at, at my first animal shelter, I was a junior in college. Um, and this is kind of a funny story. I actually worked at the front desk um, and had dropped some papers and bent over to pick them up. And a cat crawled on my shoulder um, and stood there and stayed on my shoulder for most of the entire afternoon, just walked around with me. And that was my first experience with a cat choosing me, as they say. You know, I had never really had the cat walk that bravely onto me. And I, I of course, uh, adopted that cat and, and had him for 18 years. Um, and it was just one of the most heart, you know, he was my heart cat I've, of all the cats I've met. He was the one that, you know, that, that stays with you. So, um, yeah, that was my first experience at uh, 19 years old. And from there on, um, I was sold. I'm a cat guy. And, uh, Jackson, you want to share your, your story? I, I, I think the passion for cats came when I also started working at an animal shelter. And this is back in 93, coincidentally, uh, where I first met Steve Kaufman. We worked together at the Humane Society of Boulder Valley in Boulder, Colorado. And and I did the same thing that, that Steve did. I was working at the front desk. Uh, um, and during lunch breaks, uh, they, we, you know, we would let some of the cats walk around in the break area because at that point, you know, it was a very much cage centric reality. And, and the cats picked me and they just I, and I had very little experience. I just, they just picked me. And at that time, you know, anything that, that any one person could do that would keep that cat alive till the next day was something that we did. So that passion was born out of just the very immediate life saving work. And then over time, it just, it just became my life. I'm going to ask you a quick follow up question, Jackson. So many of us that are, in this world of caring for cats, being guardians for cats, treating cats with dignity and compassion and care. I find a lot of times our journey is not necessarily sketched out for us. And I mean, we've both done very unique things 
in this journey through community cat life. And, you know, is how has that journey been for you? Has it been a predictable journey or have you found that the turns, the, the partnership here with greater goods, that these just sort of fall in front of you and you react and respond right then and there? Yeah. As you know, Stacey, I think for any of us, the, the willingness to say yes to what the universe presents is key. And I, I, if you talk to anybody that has made a life out of animal welfare, that's all it is. You know, it's like Steve saying, cat just climbed on my shoulder. I said yes to that. And here we go, 18 years. Or for me, the cats are walking up to me, rubbing up against me, seeking my attention. Who am I to say no? You know, um, and the same thing happened, whether it was uh, leaving the shelter and starting my own consulting business, uh, whether it was the, the TV show, whether it was any of the follow-ups, it's just the willingness to, to go where it takes you and, and it will always take you somewhere. So yeah, that's, it's totally unpredictable. Yeah. And I've been always so happy in the journey. I usually end up in a place that I enjoy. And I mean, if I don't, I feel confident I can change that direction. And I think that's very important for all of us in the cat world to know is that if you are in a place that is uncomfortable, you should feel empowered to change that direction. And I think maybe there are some of us out there that maybe don't feel that way. And I would encourage them to feel that they can do that. I, again, yeah, you feel uncomfortable, you're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Steve, I wanted to uh, ask you, tell me a little bit about uh, Greater Good Charities and what is the partnership that you have here with Jackson Galaxy? Well, Greater Good Charities is a, a worldwide organization that helps people, pets on the planet. So we do programming that is beneficial to um, each of those different areas. And we have about 12 signature programs and the Jackson Galaxy Project is one of those signature programs that um, we love, we, we work very closely with and um, I particularly appreciate, as Jackson said, we've worked together years ago, so it's been a, a great reunion to come back and, and work with him. Um, you know, the partnership has been really amazing in that the, the programming that Jackson's trying to accomplish and what he's trying to teach out there with cats and what the mission of greater good overall is trying to do, especially the goods program, which is the program I run, um, they really fit hand in hand in that idea of one, that the, the pet is part of the family. So when we talk about family, we're, we're including the pet in that conversation. Um, and then doing what we can to, to keep that family together. Um, and that's what the goods program is about. You know, we, we supply um, food, essential supplies, clothing, toys, um, all the things that a pet would need or a human would need to keep a pet in their home. And then Jackson provides that expertise and that knowledge of what it takes behaviorally and physically to keep the cat in the home and the needs of that particular animal so that, that we're matching everything that that can occur. Um, and that's what we see out there is uh, when we really dive into the reasons people might have to give up a cat or when they're looking to acquire a cat. What are the hindrances keeping them from acquiring them and how do we get over those hindrances? Um, and that's something that, that both of us enjoy talking about. And then on the other end, when you've got folks that already have a, a cat in their family and they're experiencing difficulties or having problems, maybe either behaviorally keeping the cat in the home or because of food or vaccinations or something like that. Again, that's where both of us have a, a really deep concentric circle with both of our programs that help us to do everything we can um, to keep that pet in the home. And I think lastly, what, what makes it so rewarding is we do it all on scale, you know? And so part of the, um, what I love about working at Greater Good Charities is, is we're working um, not just individually, you know, um, and we solve some of those individual problems as well. But we look at entire communities. And when we go into a town and we're talking about Feline 360 that I know we'll talk a little bit more about as we continue, we want to affect entire communities, not just individuals. Of course, we want to help individuals that have problems with their animals. But um, with the goods program and greater good charities in general, we're looking at making that systemic change and doing what we can on a larger level. Yeah, that's really interesting information. I, I wear multiple hats, as we all do in this world, and I'm president of a group called Positive Pantry, and we provide pet food for families all across Vermont and Massachusetts. And um, and then you got me thinking there when you were talking about enrichment 
And, you know, how important is it that we also include not only food in those families, but also the tools that they need to be able to enrich the lives of their pets and enrich the lives of their cats? I was speaking with somebody before. Jackson, I'd love for your comments. Somebody said, I would never have thought about talking about food puzzles like 15 years ago. And now the thought of having an indoor cat without a food puzzle or without vertical enrichment and and hunting options and capturing prey and and all of those tools are so critical to have, you know, a happy indoor cat that that's almost as important as food. Yeah. And I think that that, that all boils down to posing the question in a very not patronizing way, what is a cat? You know, if you can't really go, okay, what makes a cat not a dog? What makes a cat a unique? It, it comes down to that. The enrichment comes down to the need to own territory, where that territory is, how we accomplish that hunting behavior, recognizing that the cat in your home, it, in my estimation, barely domesticated on their way to domestication. And 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 their journey has been not dog, you know, and and not created predicated on a relationship with humans. That's what we're trying to teach with 360. It on a shelter level, we're going in there with that question, what is a cat? And and from there we're talking about interrupting surrender. We're talking about their life in the the the, sh- the system, and once they get adopted and keeping them there, all stemming from that place. What is a cat, and what makes them confident and happy? So, and knowing who they are, which obviously you know, um, especially working with community cats, that what's the difference between the one in your home and the one outside under your car? Not a ton, you know. I mean, when you think of the big picture, you know. Right. Right. And then there's a whole range of different layers and tools that you go through in in being able to identify the appropriate package of support for those cats at the various place that they are in their in their life, Um, which is which is so incredibly important. And and I think a lot of the world wants to be just tell me what to do this or this. That's not the way cat works. Cat does not work that way. You know, we have to read and understand. yeah. Yeah. Because that understanding also really makes you feel like I'm in a relationship. You know, the, if you because if you're in a relationship with any being, you want to know who they are. You know, and and I think that understanding that cat with a capital C gets you to dig down to that place where you understand the individual in front of you, and that makes for a rich, rewarding, and lasting family relationship. Do you need expert help taming feral kittens for adoption? Watch the Taming Feral Kittens and Cats full-length workshop video now available for free on the Urban Cat League YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com and search Urban Cat League to see all of their videos to benefit community cats. Do you want to make things easier on yourself and the others in your organization? Our friends at Dubert have teamed up with the Dallas Pets Alive and Spay Neuter Network teams, and together they have created the Companion Case Management Module. It allows you to be more proactive with all your organization's needs, create cases for your clients, and organize them by type. Whether it is a rehoming situation, a pet parent needing food or medical assistance, or simply spay and neuter inquiries. CCM can help you manage all of them right from the Dubert system. Plus a huge bonus, it allows you to connect with those clients right from the case so there is no need to open up new windows for emails or pull out your phone for text messages. Check it out and learn more at www.dubert.com to get started today. Ever wanted to quickly connect, collaborate, or problem solve with others in the animal welfare field who are, you know, real people? Look no further than Maddie's Pet Forum. Maddie's Pet Forum brings people of animal welfare together with the common goal to keep more people and pets together. We share ideas, expertise, offer each other support, resources, and more. Visit forum.maddiespetforum.org slash cats. Maddie's Pet Forum. Come for an answer. Stay for the community. Steve, tell me the specifics around the Feline 360 tour. 
Well, we just uh, kicked off Feline 360 recently with our first visit in Charleston. Um, and we are um, really going into different communities and talking about all the aspects uh, of cat care. So, um, you know, Jackson and his team have a, a very robust um, inventory of different subject matters that they can talk about. Like you said, from cats uh, surrender prevention and intervention, uh, cat care while it's in the shelter, and then post-adoption care. Um, and then he's joined by other folks from the Greater Goods team. I come in and assist uh, talking about open adoptions and the idea of having a conversation versus an interrogation. Those that have been in the adoption uh, space for a long time, we recognize that um, we have matured, I think, in our um, vision of what we look for in a good home um, and recognize maybe that we're passing up a lot of good homes, looking for great homes. Um, and so uh, I spend a lot of time talking about not just open adoptions and not really how to do them. There's a lot of information already available on how to do them. What I tend to focus on is why should we be doing them? And what are the advantages of doing that open adoption um, mentality so that you're making a good match um, and possibly making a good volunteer down the road or a good donor down the road? And I think they're all intertwined. Um, we also bring experts with us um, on marketing. Uh, that's another um, issue that uh, actually I've learned a lot, even from the first um, session listening to Jackson about how we market and even talk about cats. I never really, I don't know why this didn't occur to me about, um, and I'll let him go a little deeper on this, but approaching cats from the negative instead of the positive and talking about sort of reasons why you should get it. Cause we'll talking about the bad things a cat might do as opposed to framing it in a, in a different light. And so even for me, that's been in the industry, you know, for, for decades, it was illuminating. So um, I really do think that if there are agencies out there that are listening, that are interested in hearing um, this really well-rounded program that we put together. And this is a multi-day. This isn't one or two hours coming in. This is a, a multi-day program. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we'll do our contact information at the end. But, you know, like I said, even someone that's been in the industry for a while, you will learn something. Um, there are parts of this programming over the course of two days. You won't walk away empty-handed. So um, so that's that's feeling 360, sort of in a nutshell. So just to clarify, there's like a host organization in a community and then multiple organizations come in for the training. Is that how, how it works, Jackson? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to uh, usually work at first. Now, don't forget, we're just piloting uh, 360 around the country at the moment. And we'll go for uh, groups that we partnered with before. We know that they can host it. They're big enough to host something like this. They can act as a gathering place for for other organizations, big or small. And, and yeah, we, I, we, we want that range of experience too, because I think, you know, as she was saying, there's always something to learn. And for me, the, the conversation that happens during these days with different size shelters and rescues and, and, you know, with what their challenges are and what their advantages might be, you know, smaller groups being able to be nimble and be able to bring new approaches in in a, in a easier way is an example, but there's an, that range of experience then informs the program. By the time the program is completely road tested and ready to plug in anywhere, part of what makes it that these conversations that happen while we're teaching. So, you know, as you were talking about before that whole thing of this is, this is what keeps us vital, you know, is, is, is having that, that we're not there to lecture, we're there to have an informed and enlightened dialogue. And, that's, you know, yeah, that's what Steve was talking about with framing it from a marketing perspective. I was just going to say our first session, we had small rescue groups. We had cat cafe entrepreneurs. We had large animal shelters, nonprofit. We had municipal agencies. And so this does cross the border of everyone that touches any aspect of cat adoption. And one last thing I want to throw in there is it's also a great way that uh, for groups that might have had some troubles with each other or over the course of time, maybe there's been some difficulties. Um, Jackson always acts as a really nice mediator in between. Like there's no, you know, it really is a time people can come together, exchange business cards and show that they have more in common than they do apart. And so if these can be part of that growth as well, then that's just another win for us. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I used to, for many years, run a whole cat workshop in Massachusetts with the, all the Massachusetts organizations coming together. And it was a one day event. We had different speakers, but the beautiful thing was I used to call it sort of the Woodstock for cat lovers. You know, once in a year, we can kind of just all get together and be 
BCAT people and we'd build feeding stations at the end. And so, you know, 12 people would have these feeding stations hanging out of the back of their cars as they were driving away and and that kind of fun stuff. But it was good. It was a it was a family gathering for the year. And then we would help us heal, recover, rejuvenate, and get ready for sort of the next season. So we would usually do it in March. So we would look back and reflect and then we would reposition and and get us going, you know, for the next year. And so and, and and it sounds like that you have a lot of those components and tools in this in this program. Is this a good program for, say, an organization that is like at at a cusp of of really trying to reinvigorate, recreate their program? I mean, I'm involved with an organization that's thinking about building a new shelter just for cats, cat only. Building a new shelter is this the kind of program, Jackson, that, that these groups would benefit from? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, and I, honestly, I can't think of any situation where you can't benefit, even if the, the organization has thinks they have everything, because there is something to learn, as Steve was saying. And I think that when it comes to whether it's redefining how you approach it or having that blank slate to start it from scratch, I, I think that there's this wonderful way of of approaching it that all we're trying to do is give you a framework. And and the thing is that dogs have always had that framework. And a good example is because we know how to frame the dog experience within a shelter, that leaves you with the imagination, the innovation thinking, well, what can I do now? Are we going to have con stuffing parties? Are we going to have, you know, a big get together where we do XYZ training classes, that kind of thing. You think about it, cats just don't have that framework. And all we're trying to do is build that house so that everybody else can furnish it and uh, and come up with things that feel that feel specific to them while still serving cats, you know? And uh, um, I know I'm, I'm making it sound it, it like this, like it's the Emerald City, but this is something that, that, for the however many years I've been working in shelters, this was always something that I looked at as being the Emerald City. And and the beautiful thing is that um, through greater good and also in turn with with uh, places that are funding this, like Life of Riley through Springpoint, uh, who have been so generous with us, we get to build it. And I, I'm, yeah, I know I'm getting all gushy. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. So, Steve, if there is an organization in the country that might be interested in hosting one of these, how how what's that process? Well, they just need to reach out. You know, we're we're looking at a number of cities, so we might already be coming to your city, which we'd love to invite you if we are already coming there. If not, um, you know, I'll provide all our contact information at the end of the podcast, and they'll be able to reach out directly. Um, we'll hook you up with the coordinator that's uh, booking all the different cities and. Yeah, we'll we'll try to get on board. We're really looking at all of 2024 to um, expand this outreach and really do a lot of good for cats around the country. Excellent, excellent. Hey, Jackson, I hear you're in in Spain and you've been traveling. Tell us a little bit about what's been going on. Yeah, my wife and I uh, have uh, it, this the first date that we were ever on. We bonded over our love for Spain and uh, our our fantasy of at some point relocating uh, here. So we finally said, okay, we're, we're going to spend like five weeks in Spain and uh, and go to places that we love and some other places that we haven't and I haven't been to. And in the meantime, I just put out the word to uh, people in the cat community in Spain that I'm coming and I'd love to meet up with people. And uh, the, it's been amazing because whether we were down in the south in Sevilla, or whether we're up right now in Barcelona, we have met amazing rescuers who have as you know stacy and and steve you, you guys know so many people like this who just put their lives on the line for these cats we, i've met some amazing community cat advocates we just spent a day with this woman who she and two other people are responsible for upkeeping a colony of 250 cats in the biggest cemetery in madrid and we got to meet the cats and meet her and it was brilliant and uh but it 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 led and this is just one of those things i wanted to bring up that that in terms of the robust nature of greater good having all these signature programs that i found out that in spain while 
surgeries for community cats for uh, sterilization uh, can be subsidized. There's nothing in there for food, which means that the trappers and and the and the caretakers are on the hook. So that woman I'm talking about in the cemetery is spending over a hundred euros a day of her own money to care for these cats. And so I reach out to Steve. We're already talking about having a footprint in in Europe uh, for distribution of goods, and now we're just having a real talk about how do we get these community cats cared for without draining the savings of their caretakers. So anyway, that's exciting too, to be able to say to, to people here that, you know, I'm not just here to say hi, but I really want to see what I can do to help. And we got something. That's excellent. And what's really great is I've been hearing so from so many people that really TNR is becoming much more accepted on a worldwide level. And it is the go-to, and, and in my dream world, it's the go-to rather than a trap and remove. I mean, I certainly know that there are places around the world and in the United States where it's not the go-to option, but I like to think positive. I'm always an optimist. People don't understand how I can be in this business and be an optimist, but I am. I am an optimist, and I do believe that we are making a difference in having trap me to return be the best alternative for cats in the community. Well, with that does come more responsibility. You know, it's not just fix and feed, but there's some sheltering that goes on there. There are other components to that responsibility. And we have an obligation to try and figure out a way for the community to be able to support that. And um, But I'm just thrilled to see so many uh, countries and communities really support and endorse TNR and, you know, organizations like Greater Good also supporting TNR. It's just going to make it, it's part of our language. And I just think it's a beautiful thing. And Stacey, I mean, I, I agree with you. And I, I think, you know, getting that sort of global perspective on the exact same challenges, community to community, country to country, the misunderstanding of who these cats are, why they deserve the same dignity in life as any other animal, um, not being seen as pests that need to be removed, but being valuable members of the community, and how easy it is to just turn that key in somebody's mind to change their perspective on these cats. It's all the same. Cats occupy, in different countries, different levels of, of misunderstanding and mystery and, and where that mystery leads us, like superstitions and black cats and and seeing how easy that is to undo and then having again the the uh, resources behind us like goods or the another program like the good fix program where we have vet volunteers from all over the country who can go in and do mass sterilizations we're removing those those th- those hurdles that say nah these guys don't deserve it you know they just let them be let them die let them do whatever but i agree with you i think in our journey you know, over you with 20 years of, of working with these guys and it it's undeniable that their status in the world has has gone up and we can all celebrate that. Yeah. So, Steve, if folks are interested in finding out more about um, the uh, 360 program, how would they do that? So they could reach out to us at info at greatergood.org. And put a Jackson Galaxy project in the subject line, and um, happy to get back with them and, and see what we can do to come to your city and help. Super, Jackson. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? You know what? I'll just I just uh, keep jumping on that bandwagon. If if you uh, if you live anywhere anywhere, there are community cats that that have just not made themselves visible to you. And if they're not visible, then their caretakers are also not visible. Find out more about what you can do to help community cats in your area. Uh, as Stacy and I have always talked about, they are members of your community who deserve love and respect. And uh, let's give it to them. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. If you want to learn more about, about Greater Good in general, greatergood.org. And you can see and learn about the goods program there as well. Um, so, so yeah, visit our website and, and learn more about Greater Good Charities. Super. Well, Steve, Jackson, I want to thank you both so much for being a guest on the show. And I hope we'll have you on again in the future. Thanks, Stacey.
Thank you, Stacey. Looking forward to it. That's it for this week. Please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. We love to hear what you think, and a five-star review really helps others find the show. You can also join the conversation with listeners, cat caretakers, and me on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to hit follow or subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single show. Thanks for listening, and thank you for everything that you do to help create a safe and healthy world for cats. Wow.